It's the much-anticipated East-West game from Mary Lou Retton Park. Hi, I'm Eli Brady here to take you through the action tonight. Each team is 2-1 and one coming into this game. The Polar Bears have wins over Cameron and Phillip Barber, and they lost their last time out against Lewis County last Friday. The Bees come in with a win over North Marion. 10-0, they lost to Robert C. Bird by 3, and they beat Tyler Consolidated on Saturday by a score of 5-3. Take a look at the starting lineups today for the Bees. Music bats first, then followed by Whiteman, Radish, Brody Bledsoe batting in the cleanup, followed by Ian Graffius, Tanner Mayfield, Remington, Poor Bay, and then Lynn and Boone rounding off the lineup for the Polar Bears of Fairmont Senior. Leading off will be Cam Peschel, followed by Sammy Vianney, Logan Canfield, Brody Whitehair batting cleanup. Hayden Jones and Matt Masters follow. Then Ethan Miller, Braden Gorby, and Dylan Hours round out the starting lineups for the Polar Bears. On the mound for today's game is... Who else but Sammy Vianney for the Polar Bears. He's making his third start in four games this year. He's got ten innings pitched, and he's only allowed one hit, walked five batters, and 19 strikeouts. A really impressive start to the year for Vianney. Leading off for the Bees hitting first will be Owen Music, who is also starting on the mound. We'll take a look. In the field for the Polar Bears, again, at pitcher is Sammy Vianney. His catcher will be Ethan Miller. Hayden Jones on first. Gorby second. Birdie Whitehair at shortstop. Matt Master starting at third today. In the outfield, Dylan Hours in left. Logan Canfield in center field. And Cam Peschel starting in right field. We're just about ready to get underway here for Mary Lou Retton Park. And Vianney deals the first one down the middle for strike one. Owen Music, the batter. Here's the 0-1. Change up from Vianney called just out, outside the strike zone for ball one. The count is 1-1. One and one. Vianney deals that one just outside for ball two. All these pitches have been close. Vianney deals. That one swung and fouled back by Music. Makes the count 2-2. Two and two. On deck for the Bees is former Polar Bear Nate Whiteman. Radish batting in third. Vianney gets the call. 2-2. Two -two. Just outside for ball three, and the count is full for Owen Music. The payoff pitch. Swung on, and that is caught by Gorby. So Braden Gorby makes the catch at second base. It was hit right to him a little low. He's able to hang on for the first out. Take a look. Gorby gets down, fields it just along the dirt, but he caught it in the air, and there's one away. And now the lefty Nate Whiteman steps up to bat. Vianney deals that one outside for ball one. Polar Bears out for revenge in this game. It was this East Fairmont team that knocked him out of the postseason a year ago here. Up high for ball two. No runners on. One out. The count is 2-0 and oh for Whiteman. Vianney deals. That one hits him. And Whiteman will take his base. So Whiteman is hit by a pitch. And he is on first for the Bees. Not an ideal start there for Vianney. Brings up Danny Radish to the plate. One on, one out. Here's a pickoff attempt at first. Vianney checks. He deals. That one fouled back by Radish. Count is 0-1. Should be a really good game here tonight. Two teams, Big Ten Conference, 
Crosstown rivalry. Whiteman on first. One out of the 0-1. Called strike. Miller to the throw to Jones. Not in time, but the count is 0-2 for Radish. Vianney checks. One away, one on. The 0-2, that is swung on, hit into right center field. Chasing under it is Canfield. And a diving catch, he can't hang on. Whiteman rounding second. Here's the... It's the throw is in time. And Whiteman is out. Look for a second as if he caught it, he dropped it, but he didn't make the catch. So Radish is on second, but the throw to third was in time. And Whiteman is out. Radish on second. Here's the pitch from Vianney. It's strike one. At the plate is Brody Bledsoe for the Bees. Runner on second is Radish. Vianney deals that one. Another off-speed pitch, and it's strike two. Another 0-2 count. Two outs. One runner on second base. Vianney deals that one just a little bit outside. Ball one. No score in this game. Vianney looks at Radish on second. He deals a swing and a miss. He strikes Bledsoe out. And we go to the bottom half of the first inning. Scoreless. Polar Bears up to bat. Leading off will be Peschel, Vianney, and Canfield when we return here on Video Productions. Sandwiches, better with Pepsi. <sighs> An injury at any age can be a game changer. But with walk-in clinics Monday through Saturday, the Marshall Sports Medicine Institute is ready to get you off the bench and back in the game. Marshall Sports Medicine Institute takes care of the herd. Let us take care of you. I'm Keith Powell, and going on right now is my Keith Says Yes Fest. I'm saying yes to lowering your payments, yes to your trade-in, regardless of condition, miles, even if you're still making payments. My Keith Says Yes credit approval process helps me say yes, you're approved. So if you want new Chevys, yes. New Fords, yes. Lifetime warranty, yes. Come see me, Keith Powell, at Yes Chevy and Hurricane and Yes Ford in Huntington. It's the bottom of the first inning here at Mary Lou Ratton Park. Pitcher Owen Music warming up for the Bees. Take a look at the fielding lineup for East Fairmont. Music on the mound. His catcher is Case Lynn. Danny Radish on first. Carter McKnight at second. Brody Bledsoe at shortstop. Remington Bay at third base. In the outfield, left field is Tanner Mayfield. Center field is Ian Graffius. And in right field is Nate Whiteman. Nate Whiteman got aggressive in the top of the first inning. Logan Canfield wasn't able to pull in a fly ball in center field, but Whiteman rounded second, tried to get to third, and Canfield's arm was able to throw him out. Masters on the tag. Leading off for the Polar Bears will be Cam Peschel, and Peschel has had a really good season at the plate so far, batting 500 with four hits. He's scored six times and batted in two runners. Really good start to the season from Peschel. And here is the pitch from Music, up high for ball one. Cam Peschel, a three-sport athlete at Fairmont Senior. He also plays soccer and football, and he's good at all three. Music delivers that one down the middle for strike one. Beautiful day here at Mary Loretton Park. A little bit of wind, but 70 degrees. Couldn't ask for better weather. The one and one from Music. Swung on and fouled back by Peschel. Count is one and two. Here's the one-two. 
That one off speed, a little outside, and it's ball two. Nobody on, nobody out in the bottom of the first inning. Count is two and two. Here's the pitch from Music. Swung on, grounded right to Music. He's going to underhand it to Radish, and Peschel is out. The first out of the inning. Take, one, take a look at the replay here. It's just... Wasn't in the strike zone. Peschel chased it a little bit, and it was a soft grounder right to Music, and he was able to flip it to Radish to get the easy out. Up to the plate now is Sammy Vianney, who is on the mound starting for the Polar Bears today. He gets the pitch from Music, up high outside for ball one. Count is 1-0. Off-speed pitch, and it's called strike one. The one and one. Bunt fouled back off the press box by Vianney. And the count is one and two. That one came right for us here in the press box. Nobody on one out. Count is one and two. The pitch from Music outside for ball two. Here's the two two. Swing and a miss by Vianney. He strikes out, and there's two away now for the Polar Bears. That'll bring up Logan Canfield to the plate. And a good start to this game for Owen Music. Now batting number two, Logan Canfield. Logan Canfield at the plate with nobody on and two outs. That one is high for ball one. Here's the 1-0. -oh. Down the middle for strike one. Logan Canfield on the season, 11 plate appearances, three hits, one run and two RBIs. He's batting 300. That one down the middle again for strike two. One two count. Nobody on and two outs. Here's the pitch from Music. Outside gets away from Lynn and it's ball two. Music gets the signal. He deals. That one slides just outside of the strike zone. A good pitch from Music. Doesn't get the call, and the count is full. Here's the payoff pitch. That one at Canfield's head, and he walked him. So Canfield is on base. First base runner of the game for the Polar Bears, and that'll bring up Brody Whitehair, who also has had a really good game. Really good start to this season. Batting only 286, but he's got three runs and three RBIs, and you need a score you can count on him. One on. That one outside for ball one. The runner is Logan Canfield. Music checks first. Canfield with the lead. One on and two outs. The 1-0. -oh. That one inside. White hair ducks out of the way. And the count is 2-0. -oh. Two outs. One base runner. 2-0 -oh count for Brody White hair. He gets the pitch from Music. The bunt attempt. That one's in the air. Chased under it. Music, the throw to Radish is in time. And that'll end the first inning. Scoreless after one from Mary Lou Retton Park. Top of the second when we return here on Video Productions. Hi, my name's Zach Frazier, and I'm from Fairmont, West Virginia. And when I'm back at home in Fairmont, you'll find me at my local Parmar store. We had that Golden Boot pride at Parmar. There are literally hundreds of Parmar stores in West Virginia, Kentucky, Ohio, and Pennsylvania, and even more on the way. Download the Parmar app to save even more. And whether it's food, gas, groceries, or whatever, we have you covered at Parmar. 
West Virginia proud and ready to serve you. If there's not a Parmar store near you now, there will be soon. An injury at any age can be a game changer. But with walk-in clinics Monday through Saturday, the Marshall Sports Medicine Institute is ready to get you off the bench and back in the game. Marshall Sports Medicine Institute takes care of the herd. Let us take care of you. Sandwiches. Better with Pepsi. Welcome back to Mary Lou Retton Park. Leading off for the Bees this inning will be Ian Graffius. Pitcher for the Polar Bears is Sammy Vianney, who's making his third start in four games. And the first two starts have been very good for Vianney through a no-hitter with 15 strikeouts and only one walk in the season opener against Cameron. Allowed four walks, one hit, and struck out four batters in his start against Phillip Barber. Here's the pitch outside for ball one. Count is 1-0. and oh. Vianney deals. Swing and a miss by Graffius. Count is 1-1. One and one. Vianney gets the signal. The 1-1 one, one is down the middle for strike two. The one, two, up high, ball two. Miller threw the ball back to Vianney and it got away. Well, here comes over and hands the ball to Vianney and he steps back on the mound with the count two and two. Nobody on and nobody out. The pitch outside and the count is full. Top of the second inning, still scoreless. Better start to this game than on Friday for the Polar Bears when they gave up five runs in the first. That one is fouled back by Graffius, and the count is still full. Payoff pitch. Down the middle for strike three, and Graffius strikes out looking. Second strikeout of the day for Vianney. That'll bring up Tanner Mayfield for the Bees. Now batting number 12, Tanner Mayfield. Nobody on, one out here in the top of the second. The pitch from Vianney. Down the middle for strike one. He had 19 strikeouts coming into this game. He's added two already. Here's the 0-1, up high, ball one. The 1-1. One, one. Down the middle again for strike two. Vianney keeping it up-tempo. He doesn't like to take a lot of time between his pitches. Keeps it going fast. Here's the 1-2. Swung on. That is hit. And Gorby makes the catch for the second out. Second catch made by Gorby, who is starting at second base. Now back at number 13. He had to move a little bit more on this one. He's able to haul it in. Two away. Brings up poor Bay. Pitch from Vianney, and it hit him. Second. Second time Vianney has tagged the batter. He hit Whiteman in the first inning, and he just hit poor Bay there. So with two outs, poor Bay takes one pitch, and he takes his base. And that'll bring Case up Lynn. Case Lynn, the catcher, with a runner on first. Two out. Here's the throw. Oh. Tagged by Jones, not in time on Poor Bay. Two outs. The pitch from Vianney outside for ball one. Now 
Vianney checks first. He deals the 1-0. Off speed down the middle for strike one. Vianney gets the call. Checks first. The count is one and one. He fires that one in the dirt. Poor Bay takes off. Throw by Miller. Gorby with the tag. He got him. And that'll end the top of the second inning. What a play for the Polar Bears. And another tag out as we go to the bottom of the second inning. Due up for Fairmont Senior will be Hayden Jones, Matt Masters, and Ethan Miller when we return here on Video Productions. Hi, this is Meredith Mayer from Fairmont, West Virginia. And when I'm back home, you can find me at my local Parmar store. We have that thundering herd pride at your local Parmar stores. We are over 200 stores strong and growing. Download the Parmar app for even more savings and sign up for the Parmar rewards card. Whether it's food, gas, or groceries, we have you covered. We are Marshall and we are Parmar stores. If there's not a Parmar store near you now, there will be soon. Here at the Cracker Barrel, homestyle food and great value go hand in hand with favorites like slow simmer chicken and dumplings starting at $7.99 or perfectly golden fluffy buttermilk pancakes with your own bottle of warm syrup. Come fill up on favorites without emptying your wallet. Cracker Barrel, take care now. Welcome back to Mary Lou Retton Park. We'll take a look at that play that ended the top of the second inning. You can see the pitch was in the dirt, but Poor Bay was late taking off to second. Miller was able to scoop it up and throw it to Braden Gorby, who gets down for the tag. Second time the Bees have been caught too aggressive in this game. That has led to a tag out. It was Whiteman in the first inning who was tagged out in third by a long throw by Canfield. Poor Bay tagged out. On a throw by Miller to Gorby, and that'll bring up Hayden Jones, the senior. Start the bottom of the second inning. Pitch from Music. Had some curve on that one, and Jones fouls it back. Count is 0-1. Music, that one inside for ball one. The 1-1, one, one. outside for ball two. Count is two and one for Jones. And checks his swing, did not go around, and the count is three and one. Good spot here for Jones. What does Music decide to go to here? The three one. Up high, ball four, and Jones is on with a walk. Jones takes first, and that'll bring Matt Masters to the plate. And if you were to pick a player of the game for the 11-run loss on Friday, it would be Matt Masters. Came in in the fifth inning to pitch and shut down Lewis County for a second, and he got a hit and an RBI, and here's one popped foul. Under it is Radish, and he makes the catch right in front of the visitor's dugout, and Masters is out. So one pitch, and Masters is out there. That'll bring up the senior, Ethan Miller. Ethan Miller. Miller comes to the plate. One out, one on. The runner is Hayden Jones. The pitch from Music called strike one. Music checks the runner on first. He deals the 0-1. Swung on into center field by Miller, and Graffius makes the catch for the second out of the inning. Ian Graffius in center field, able to haul it in, and there's two away for the Polar Bears. Brings up the sophomore, Braden Gorby. Gorby comes to the plate. Base runner on first is Hayden Jones with two outs. The 
pitch from Music. Up high inside for ball one. Count is 1-0. The pitch from Music in that one. Way inside and Gorby jumps out of the way for ball two. Two outs, that one inside again. And the count is 3-0 for Gorby. One on, two outs, and the count is 3-0. Good situation to be in if you're Braden Gorby. Music deals. Jones takes off, and he walks. Lynn threw it to second, but there was no need as Gorby takes his base, and there's two on and two outs. Now batting number five, Dylan Auer. Third walk of the game. Owen Music he has one strikeout. Hasn't allowed a hit to this point. Here is the pitch. This is Dylan Hours, the senior, at the plate. Also a three-sport athlete for the Polar Bears. And he's also extremely good at all three. That one outside. Five straight balls thrown by, that's six, six straight balls thrown by Music. That one off speed curves in for strike one. Two base runners for the Polar Bears. Jones at second and Gorby at first. Two outs. Here's the 2-1. That one, another off-speed pitch in the zone for strike two. Went to it, back-to-back -back pitches, and it's worked. Two straight strikes for Owen Music. Two on, two out. Count is 2-2. Two, two. Swing and a miss by Hours. He strikes out, and that will end the second inning. Do up for the bees when we come back will be Boone, Music, and White Men. You're watching live streaming coverage of Fairmont Senior Polar Bear Baseball here on Video Productions. Hi, my name is Zach Frazier and I'm from Fairmont, West Virginia. And when I'm back at home in Fairmont, you'll find me at my local Parmar store. We had that gold of pride at Parmar. There are literally hundreds of Parmar stores in West Virginia, Kentucky, Ohio, and Pennsylvania, and even more on the way. Download the Parmar app to save even more. And whether it's food, gas, groceries, or whatever, we have you covered at Parmar. West Virginia proud and ready to serve you. If there's not a Parmar store near you now, there will be soon. An injury at any age can be a game changer. But with walk-in clinics Monday through Saturday, the Marshall Sports Medicine Institute is ready to get you off the bench and back in the game. Marshall Sports Medicine Institute takes care of the herd. Let us take care of you. Sandwiches. Better with Pepsi. Welcome back to Mary Lou Retton Park, and the batter will be Case Lynn instead of Boone, and that's because Lynn never got out at the end of the last inning. It was poor Bay taking off from first to second. He got tagged out for the third out of the inning. So Case Lynn is back at the plate for the Bees. Starting the top of the third inning, it's been a quick game go so far. Scoreless to this point. Both pitchers playing really well to start. A swing and a miss by Lynn for strike one. The 0 1 from Vianney, and that one is fouled back by Lynn. And Jones has a shot at it, but it goes over the fence and foul. The count is 0 and 2. Pitch count pretty even to this point. 33 for Vianney, 36 for Music. And Vianney deals a swing and a miss by Lynn. He strikes out. Third strikeout of the game for Vianney. And Lynn gets out anyway. One away. Brings up Boone to the plate for the Bees.
Tristan Boone. Nobody on, one out. The pitch from Vianney is fouled back. Count is 0-1. One. one out and nobody on. Boone, who is DHing in this game, he's not in the field. That one grounded right to Gorby. Has a chance for another play, and Gorby throws to Jones. And two outs for the Polar Bears. Braden Gorby has seen a lot of action at second base. Normally starting in right field or on the mound. Playing second here. Third play made for Gorby. He's caught two. Fields the ground ball there. Gets it to Jones, and there's two away. And here is a hit high by Music. And foul. Count is 0 and 1 to 0 and Music. Two outs, nobody on. Music grounded out in the first inning. The 0 1 from Vianney up high for ball one. Vianney gets the signal going quick again. The 1 1. Called strike two. Music tried to duck way down to get it above his head. Ump didn't fall for it, as it was right down the middle. The one, two. That one on the edge of the strike zone just called outside for ball two. Vianney has three strikeouts in this game. That makes 22 on the season in just a little over three games. Here's the two, two, a swing and a miss. Miller throws to first for insurance. And we'll head to the bottom of the third inning. This game going quickly here at Mary Lou Retton Park. You're watching live streaming coverage of Fairmont Senior Polar Bear Baseball here on Video Productions. Mm. Sandwiches, better with Pepsi. An injury at any age can be a game changer. But with walk-in clinics Monday through Saturday, the Marshall Sports Medicine Institute is ready to get you off the bench and back in the game. Marshall Sports Medicine Institute takes care of the herd. Let us take care of you. I'm Keith Powell, and going on right now is my Keith Says Yes Fest. I'm saying yes to lowering your payments, yes to your trade-in, regardless of condition, miles, even if you're still making payments. My Keith Says Yes credit approval process helps me say yes, you're approved. So if you want new Chevys, yes. New Fords, yes. Lifetime warranty, yes. Come see me, Keith Powell at Yes Chevy and Hurricane and Yes Ford in Huntington. Welcome back to Mary Lou Retton Park where it's the battle of the pitchers as we are scoreless going into the bottom of the third inning. Due up for the Polar Bears is the top of the lineup, Cam Peschel. Take a look at the season stats for Cam Peschel at the plate. He's batting 500 with four hits, six runs, and two RBIs. Today, he grounded out in the first inning. This is his second plate appearance. And Cam comes to the plate. Start the bottom of the third inning. Pitch. From music is outside for ball one. So far, neither team has got a hit in this game. Closest thing to a hit was Radish into center field, but that was dropped by Canfield. Go down as an error. That's 2 0 is in the strike zone for strike one. Count is 2 and 1. For Peschel, the pitch from Music, a swing and a drive to center field. Graffius is back, and he makes the catch. One away. That'll bring up Sammy Vianney to the plate, and Graffius has seen some action back in center field. That's his second catch made. So Peschel not doing much to improve that 500 batting average as he's grounded out and now flied out in this game. Vianney comes to the plate. Sees the pitch from Music. Called strike one. 
No base runners. One out. The count is 0 and 1. That one grounded. Tough play by Music. He backhands it. The throw to Radish is in time. Good play by the pitcher, Owen Music. And he's seen a lot of action so far. That one grounded to the left of him. He had to make a tough play on it. He's able to come off the mound, field it, backhanded, turn around in time, and a perfect throw to the first baseman, Danny Radish. And now that's two away in the inning. Still neither team has a hit or has allowed a hit. That one outside for ball one. The batter is Canfield. Nobody on, two outs. The 1-0. Low in the strike zone, called strike one. Count is one and one. Pitch from Music. Outside for ball two. Both Vianney and Music like to go fast from the mound. They don't like to take much time between the pitches. Here Music goes again, two and one in the dirt, ball three. Nobody on, two out. Count is three and one to Canfield. That one called ball four, and Canfield will take his base. So that is the fourth walk allowed of the game for Owen Music. Still yet to allow a hit, and Canfield is on first for the second time today. Brody Whitehair comes to the plate. And Whitehair swings, and this one is down into center field, and Whitehair has the first hit of the game. They were due. Three innings without a hit for both teams, and Brody Whitehair breaks the ice, puts two on with two out, brings up Hayden Jones. See what Jones can do. That one low, strike one. Two outs, two on. Count is 0 and 1. Two Jones swings and fouls it back. So Jones finds himself down in the count 0 and 2 with two outs. I'd like to try Canfield in scoring position. Jones would like to try to get him to scamper home for the first run of the game. The pitch from Music outside for ball one. Music checks Canfield at second, delivers the one-two. A swing and a miss by Jones. And another strikeout in this game. We are still scoreless after three. Top of the fourth coming up next when we return here on Video Productions. Hi, this is Meredith Mayer from Fairmont, West Virginia, and when I'm back home, you can find me at my local Parmar store. We had that thundering herd pride at your local Parmar stores. We are over 200 stores strong and growing. Download the Parmar app for even more savings and sign up for the Parmar rewards card. Whether it's food, gas, or groceries, we have you covered. We are Marshall and we are Parmar stores. If there's not a Parmar store near you now, there will be soon. Here at the Cracker Barrel, homestyle food and great value go hand in hand with favorites like slow simmer chicken and dumplings starting at $7.99 or perfectly golden fluffy buttermilk pancakes with your own bottle of warm syrup. Come fill up on favorites without emptying your wallet. Cracker Barrel, take care now. Welcome back to Mary Lou Retton Park. We are 40 minutes into this game and already just about halfway through, assuming this game ends in seven innings, which it did not the last time these two teams played was in the postseason a year ago where the Bees ended the Polar Bears' hopes of making another trip back to the Final Four in Charleston. Bears trying to avenge that loss today. Up to the plate is Nate, Wy Nate Whiteman, who did used to play for the Polar Bears. Transferred over to East Fairmont. And that one is fouled back. 
Count is 0-1 for Whiteman. Whiteman got aggressive early. Bees were in a good spot to maybe put a run on the board in the first inning. Whiteman got aggressive, got tagged out at third. The 0-1 is grounded by Whiteman. Right to Gorby again. Another play by Gorby, and he makes the throw to Jones for the out. That is the fourth ball of this game that's been hit toward Gorby, and he's made the play every single time. And he doesn't usually start a second. Now batting number 24, Danny Radish. Brings Radish up to the plate. Pitch from Vianney. A pie for ball one. Danny Radish, Danny Radish plays first base for the Bees. Has the count 0 and 2 and 0. Two balls, no strikes, no one on, one out. That one up high, and the count is now 3-0 and for Radish. Good opportunity to have a base runner here for the Bees. No one on, one out, the 3-0. That one a little up high again, and it's ball four on four straight pitches, and Radish is on. Brody Bledsoe will come to the plate. Brody Bledsoe. Base runner at first is Radish. Scoreless here in the top of the fourth inning. Pitch from Vianney, off speed, curve ball, right in the strike zone for strike one. He's gone to that quite a few times today, and it's worked just about every time. Has a nasty curve. Goes to it again. Back-to-back -back pitches, and the count is 0-2 for Bledsoe. One out, one on. Vianney checks and deals. That one went back to the fastball, and Bledsoe strikes out looking for the second out of the inning. Take a look at that pitch. He went two straight curveballs. Goes to his fastball there, and it works perfect right down the middle. And Bledsoe watches it past. So he walked Radish on four straight balls, and he strikes out Bledsoe on three straight strikes. A swing and a miss by Graffius. The throw to first. Oh! It looked like Jones had the tag. But they say safe. Take a look at the replay real quick. Graffius swings and misses. Radish caught off guard. The throw was well in time. Jones must have just missed the tag before Radish got back on base. So there's still two outs and one on. Count is 0-1 for Graffius. Vianney deals. That one is grounded right to Jones, but it's foul. The count is 0-2. Again, Radish at first as a base runner. He's the one on... Two outs in the top of the fourth. Count is 0-2 for Graffius. Vianney deals. That is swing and a miss. And Graffius strikes out for the second time today. And that will flip it to the bottom half of the fourth inning when we return here on Video Productions. Sandwiches, better with Pepsi. <sighs> An injury at any age can be a game changer. But with walk-in clinics Monday through Saturday, the Marshall Sports Medicine Institute is ready to get you off the bench and back in the game. Marshall Sports Medicine Institute takes care of the herd. Let us take care of you. I'm Keith Powell, and going on right now is my Keith Says Yes Fest. I'm saying yes to lowering your payments, yes to your trade-in, regardless of condition, miles, even if you're still making payments. My Keith Says Yes credit approval process helps me say yes, you're approved. So if you want new Chevys, yes. New Fords, yes. Lifetime warranty, yes. Come see me, Keith Powell at Yes Chevy and Hurricane and Yes Ford in Huntington. Welcome back to Mary Lou Ratton Park. Still scoreless halfway through this game and it has flown by unlike the other three games that have been played this season. Fourth game of the year for the Polar Bears. All four have been here. 
four straight home games to start the season. Matt Masters will come to the plate for the Polar Bears. And in only three plate appearances on the season, Masters has a hit and two RBIs. He had a hit and an RBI against Lewis County. And that one is grounded back foul for strike one. Only one hit in this game. It was Brody Whitehair in the third inning. Music goes to the off pitch, and it's called ball one. Music deals that one called strike two. Pitch count has been very close for the two pitchers in this game. 55 for Music, 53 for Vianney. Pitchers duel, the one-two outside for ball two. Masters, who had a heck of a game. One of the positives you can look at from an 11-1 loss last Friday. That one inside. The count is full. Masters stands in. The payoff pitch. A swing and a miss. And he didn't need to go around. That one was high and inside. But he strikes out. Music caught him off guard. Went up high. And Masters goes around. First out of the inning. Brings up the senior, Ethan Miller, who flew out in the second. Music deals. That one up high for ball one. Ethan Miller has three hits, a run, an RBI, and a double on the season. Batting 429. That one low and inside for ball two. One out, nobody on for the Polar Bears. The 2-0 from Music is popped high by Miller. Radish under it in foul territory, and he can't get there. Went right off the edge of his glove. He's about one step too short. And so Miller will stay alive. Radish had a chance at it. Right in front of the visitors' dugout. Couldn't haul it in, and the count is two and one. Music fires outside for ball three. Nobody on, one out. The three one outside, and Miller will walk. And the Bears have a base runner for Braden Gorby, who also walked in the second inning. Gorby on the season in eight plate appearances has two hits and a run scored. Yet to record an RBI, batting 333. And now we have a pinch runner. For the Polar Bears. On first for the Polar Bears. Pinch runner. Who else? One of the most exciting football players in the state. Cannon Dinger. Runner on first. For Miller. Who's the pitch. Called strike one. Music to Gorby. Cannon Dinger appearing in his first game this season. Lines up on first and try to pick him off immediately. He didn't have a very big lead, but music, they know how athletic he is. One of the most athletic people, high school players in the state. If you watch his football highlight reel from this season, you'll see why. 0-1. Get Dinger takes off and no throw from Lynn and Cannon Dinger has a stolen base for the Polar Bears. How about that? Take a look at the replay. He was ready. He was taken off. Lynn didn't have a good grip on it. Dinger was there in a flash. 
One out, one on. The count is one and one. And that one is called strike two for Braden Gorby. Dinger at second. A real threat now as Music looks back. He deals. That one right in the strike zone, and Gorby strikes out looking for the second out of the inning. Brings up Dylan Hours. A couple of polar bear football players. A key moment here. Dinger on second. Hours at the plate with two outs. That one up on the outside corner for ball one. Pitch from Music in the dirt, but they call it strike one. Looked a little low. Dinger with a big lead at second. That one up high for ball two, two hours. Coach Peschel talking to Dinger at second. Music delivers and Hours is going to foul this one away. Count is two and two. Dinger's ready. Hours can put contact on it. Dinger's ready to come home. The pitch, that one in the dirt. Count is full. Music checks the payoff pitch. Grounded right to Bledsoe. He picks it up, cranks and fires, and it's not in time, and Hours gets there safely. So another hit for the Polar Bears. That would have been a tough play from Brody Bledsoe. So he had to move over. Dinger jumped in front of him for a second. A heads-up play for Dinger. Just to jump in front of Bledsoe. Make it a little harder to field that ball. Brings up Peschel. So Hours with a base hit and Cam Peschel at the plate with two on and two out. The 1-0 called strike one. So now there's three football players for the Polar Bears in this situation. Dinger at second, Hours at first, Peschel at the plate, and he grounds it right to Radish, who drops it for a second. Here comes Dinger, rounding third, Hours close behind, and Dinger is safe. Polar Bears take the lead. It's 1-0 in the bottom of the fourth. An error by Danny Radish. It was right in his glove, and it slips away, and the Polar Bears take advantage. It went right behind him, and Radish gave up. Dinger came home, and it's one nothing Fairmont Senior. On first is Peschel. On third is ours, Vianney. At the plate, he shows bunt. They throw to first. Peschel slides back on safely. Hours is now at third as a base runner. Two on, two out. Hours in scoring position. Vianney shows bunt again. And he pulls back and takes strike one. Pitch count has gone way up for music in this inning. He's now at 77. He's at 51 going into this inning. Pulvers have done a good job staying alive. And now he throws a pickoff attempt to third base. That is hours at third base. Not very close attempt. Hours is ready to come home. See if Vianney can get him there. Another pickoff attempt from Music. This time he throws to Radish at first. Count is still 0-1. For Vianney, with two outs and two on. Pitch from Music. This is grounded foul. It went straight down on the plate. 
Took a bounce backwards, and that brings up an 0-2 count for Vianney, who struck out and grounded out already in this game, looking to make something happen. The Bears took a 1-0 lead in this game as Dinger scored on the error by Danny Radish. Count is 0-2 with two on and two outs for Vianney. Pitch by Music. That one called strike three. The fourth inning is over, but not before the Polar Bears can break out and put a run on the board. They lead 1-0 here on Video Productions. Hi, my name is Zach Frazier, and I'm from Fairmont, West Virginia. And when I'm back at home in Fairmont, you'll find me at my local Parmar store. We had that Golden Boo pride at Parmar. There are literally hundreds of Parmar stores in West Virginia, Kentucky, Ohio, and Pennsylvania, and even more on the way. Download the Parmar app to save even more. And whether it's food, gas, groceries, or whatever, we have you covered at Parmar. West Virginia proud and ready to serve you. If there's not a Parmar store near you now, there will be soon. An injury at any age can be a game changer. But with walk-in clinics Monday through Saturday, the Marshall Sports Medicine Institute is ready to get you off the bench and back in the game. Marshall Sports Medicine Institute takes care of the herd. Let us take care of you. Sandwiches. Better with Pepsi. <sighs> Welcome back to Mary Lou Retton Park. Getting ready for the top of the fifth inning. Due up for East Fairmont will be Tanner Mayfield, Remington Porbo, and Case Lynn. Polar Bears scored. It was Cannon Dinger who came home as a pinch runner for the Polar Bears. Take a look at it. Grounded right to Radish, and it hit right in front of him. It goes right under his glove. You can see the speed from Dinger rounding third, coming to the plate, beating the throw. Gives the Polar Bears a 1-0 advantage here in the fifth inning. Have the Bees in a deficit. First lead of the game by either team. Up to the plate is Tanner Mayfield, who popped out in the second inning. Pitch from Vianney is down the middle for strike one. Vianney deals that one. Check swung, and he did not go around. It's ball one. The 1-1. One, one. Popped up foul by Mayfield. And the count is one and two. Six strikeouts in this game for Vianney. Looking for seven, and no, it's outside for ball two. That makes 25 strikeouts in just over two games on the mound for Vianney. That one in the dirt makes the count full. Payoff pitch, swing and a miss by Mayfield and Vianney strikes him out. The seventh of the game. First out of the inning. Now batting number 13, Remington Porbay. Porbay steps up to the plate. The lefty was tagged out at second after being walked in the second inning. The pitch from Vianney outside for ball one. One out, nobody on. The Bears hold a 1-0 lead, and poor Bay is hit by a pitch for the second time today. He was hit by a pitch in the second inning. Take a look. Turns around and got hit in the back twice. That'll bring up Case Lynn for the Bees with Polar Bay on first with one out. It's the third batter hit of the game for Riviani. The Bears have yet to give up a run, though. Pitch 
up high for ball one. Vianney checks first. The throw. Called ball two. They try to throw to Jones and get Poor Bay out, and they're unsuccessful. Count is 2 and 0 for Lynn. Vianney gets the signal. He fires a swing and a miss by Lynn. Strike one. One out, one on. The count is two and one. The pitch. Off speed. Low for ball three. This will be pitch number 66 from Vianney on the game. And it's low. And Lynn walks back to back. Walks allowed for the Polar Bears, and it's two on with only one out for East Fairmont. Looking to try and tie this game up. Now batting number three, Tristan Boone. Tristan Boone comes to the plate with two on and one out. Vianney takes a second at the mound. Um, saying something, couldn't make out what. The pitch in this one is popped up. Hours on the run. Whitehair comes over and makes the catch for the second out. And so one pitch to Boone, and he's out. As Whitehair is able to get under it and make the catch. Music comes to the plate is Brady Hudson on first instead of Lynn. And that's probably what the ump was talking about. Two outs, two on. Pitch from Vianney called strike one. Owen oh, Music at the plate. He's been on the mound the entire game. Getting pitches from Vianney who's been on the mound the entire game. The 0-1 is grounded. Vianney gets out of the way. And here comes... Poor Bay to the plate, and we are tied as the throw is late, but they try to throw back to second, and is safe, and the Bees have tied it. We are squared at one with two runners in scoring position for East Fairmont. This Poor Bay comes in. On the RBI by Owen Music brings up Whiteman, who's grounded out and tagged out in this game. And he steps away for a second. So Case Lynn, who was walked, his pinch ran is Hudson, who's on third. And they're having a meeting at the mound with Sammy Vianney. Take a look at that play again that tied the game for the Bees. Break it down. Poor Bay hits it. Vianney dodges out of the way and just a massive gap right at second base. Whitehair came over. Is able to field it. No, Canfield had to come up and get it. Throw to the plate was late and Poor Bay comes in to score. They try to throw back to second to get music out. Weren't able to do so. So Music with an RBI. Squares it at one apiece. Two on. Both in scoring position for the Bees. Whiteman grounds it. Gorby has to make a play on it. Fields the throw to Jones. Is in time for the out. And a huge play by the Polar Bears to limit the Bees to only one run in the fifth. 
bottom of the fifth inning coming up next. We got a thriller here at the Lou. Squared at one. You're watching live streaming coverage of Polar Bear Baseball on Video Productions. Sandwiches. Better with Pepsi. An injury at any age can be a game changer. But with walk-in clinics Monday through Saturday, the Marshall Sports Medicine Institute is ready to get you off the bench and back in the game. Marshall Sports Medicine Institute takes care of the herd. Let us take care of you. I'm Keith Powell, and going on right now is my Keith Says Yes Fest. I'm saying yes to lowering your payments. Yes to your trade-in. Regardless of condition, miles, even if you're still making payments. My Keith Says Yes credit approval process helps me say yes, you're approved. So if you want new Chevys, yes. New Fords, yes. Lifetime warranty, yes. Come see me, Keith Powell at Yes Chevy and Hurricane and Yes Ford in Huntington. Welcome back to Mary Lou Retton Park. And as we anticipated, we got a good one between the Crosstown rivals East and West, tied at one, heading into the bottom of the fifth inning. Very similar to the game in the postseason a year ago. Saw the bees eliminate the polar bears. Logan Canfield will come to the plate for Fairmont Senior. Cannon Dinger came around and scored in the fourth inning, gave the polar bears their only run. Remington Poor Bay came around and scored for the bees to give them their only run. And we are tied 1-1. Count is 1-0 and to Canfield, and that one down the middle for strike one. The 1-1 from Music in the dirt for ball two. And he's getting up there in the pitch count. It was low for a while, but the Polar Bears were able to raise it by a lot in the fourth inning. This will be pitch number 83 for Music. Vanny has 70. That one up high, ball three. Canfield has been walked twice in this game. See if he can get on again with a walk. And yes, he does. And Logan Canfield is on with nobody out. Brody Whitehair will come to the plate. Six walks in this game. Allowed by Owen Music. Canfield now on first with a walk for the third time. Pitch from Music. Outside for ball one. Polar Bears have a lot of multi sport athletes on this team. White hair, Canfield, Hours, Dinger, Peschel. They throw to first. Canfield slides safely. Meanwhile, the Bees don't have a lot, at least that play football, like the Polar Bears do. Count is 1-0. and The pitch from Music up high inside. Ball two. Vianney walked two batters in a row in the top of the fifth. Polar Bears trying to do the same here, get on base with nobody out. That one up high again, and the count is 3-0. and so four straight balls thrown by Music. And Whitehair sees a 3-0 count. Music getting up there and pitches. This will be number 88. Just the bottom of the fifth inning. He checks first. 3-0. A swing and a miss by Whitehair. They try to throw back to Radish who has to leap and make the catch. Canfield is back safely and the count is 3-1. Again, nobody out. One runner for Fairmont Senior. The 3-1. Swing and a miss again by Whitehair. So back-to-back -back pitches. And they have been in the strike zone. It would have been called strikes either way. Whitehair taking a chance at him. Now the count is full. One on. Nobody out. Score tied at one. The payoff pitch. A swing and a miss by Whitehair. He swings and misses three straight times. Canfield gets the second, though. And he is safe. And the Bears have a runner in scoring position with only one out in the bottom of the fifth. Hayden Jones will come to the plate. And... 
the umps have called interference. Don't have a replay of that. Can go back. Coach Dave Reiser comes over to talk to the ump. So they called interference on Whitehair on the throw to second. And that means Canfield is out. So, well, it looked promising for the Polar Bears as not turned out very well. And the count is 1 0 for Jones. Fouls that one back in the dirt. Jones walked in the second, struck out in the third. Third plate appearance of the game for the senior. Nobody on now with the count one and one. Throw by Music is fouled up high and away by Jones. And the count is now one and two. The one two fouled back again by Jones. Count will remain one and two. Polar Bears had a very promising start to this inning. Seen it go downhill. Jones trying to spark it back up again. He watches that one outside for ball two. And a very close game here at Mary Lou Retton Park. Jones, this one is hit into right center field. Back is Whiteman at the wall. He makes the catch. We head to the sixth inning, tied at one. Watching live streaming coverage of Polar Bear Baseball here on Video Productions. Hi, my name is Zach Frazier, and I'm from Fairmont, West Virginia. And when I'm back at home in Fairmont, you'll find me at my local Parmar store. We had that gold of pride at Parmar. There are literally hundreds of Parmar stores in West Virginia, Kentucky, Ohio, and Pennsylvania, and even more on the way. Download the Parmar app to save even more. And whether it's food, gas, groceries, or whatever, we have you covered at Parmar. West Virginia proud and ready to serve you. If there's not a Parmar store near you now, there will be soon. An injury at any age can be a game changer. But with walk-in clinics Monday through Saturday, the Marshall Sports Medicine Institute is ready to get you off the bench and back in the game. Marshall Sports Medicine Institute takes care of the herd. Let us take care of you. Sandwiches. Better with Pepsi. Getting ready for the top of the sixth inning here at Mary Lou Retton Park. Due up for the Bees will be Radish, Bloodsoe, and Graffius. Score is tied 1-1. Vianney returns to the mound for the Polar Bears. Radish back to the plate. Radish reached base with an error in the first inning. He walked in the fourth inning. But his error has also given up the only run of the game for the Polar Bears. Now batting number 24, Danny Radish. Start of the sixth inning. Pitch count difference, 25 more pitches by Music than by Vianney. Vianney goes that one in the strike zone for strike one. The 0-1 down in the dirt for ball one. The one one goes off speed, tries to curve it in, but it's too high. Danny Radish is a big batter with a big strike zone, but they haven't been calling those high ones. The two one, that one they call low for ball three. Count is three and one with nobody on and nobody out for East Fairmont. Vianney deals. A swing. This one's grounded toward Gorby again. He makes the play. Throw to Jones is in time. And Radish is out. Braden Gorby starting at second base. Has seen a lot of balls hit his way in this game. And he's fielded all of them. And made the play every single time. 
And that's exactly what you want if you're Coach Reiser. And that one almost hits Brody Bledsoe. Vianney went to the heat there. The 1-0. That one bounces and hits off the press box. Count is 2-0 for Bledsoe, who has struck out twice in this game in the first and fourth innings. Vianney deals. That one went around for strike one. That was inside. Could have been a 3-0 count. But Bledsoe goes around, and now it is two and one with one out and nobody on. Pitch from Vianney. Swung and fouled back off the top of the press box. And the count is two and two. No base runners for the Bees. Radish grounded out just before this. Bledsoe sees a 2-2, two, two, a swing and a miss. Vianney strikes him out. The eighth strikeout of the game for Sammy Vianney. Now batting, number 10, Ian Graffius. Graffius will come up now for the Bees. Graffius has also struck out twice in this game. He swings and misses on that one. So that was the third time Bledsoe has struck out this game. Vianney deals that one high for ball one. Eight strikeouts in this game for Vianney. Makes 27 on the season. Swing and a miss by Graffius. Neither Graffius nor Bledsoe have been able to put their bat to the ball and put it in play. A lot of swings and misses. The one, two. That one, he does foul back. Count will remain one and two. Nobody on and two outs for the Bees. Graffius has a one-two count. Here's the pitch from Vianney. Fouled back again. Graffius swings at a lot of pitches. He swung a lot today. New baseballs for the Empire. Behind home plate. Here's the one, two. That one just outside for ball two. The 2-2. Two -two. That one fouled back again by Graffius. Count remains 2-2 two and two with nobody on and two outs in the top of the sixth inning at Mary Lou Retton Park with the score tied 1-1. This will be pitch number 87 for Vianney. Count 2-2. Two and two. The throw inside and the count is full. Payoff pitch. That one called strike three. Make it nine for Vianney. And we head to the bottom of the sixth inning. Polar Bears up to bat when we return here on Video Productions. Hi, this is Meredith Mayer from Fairmont, West Virginia. And when I'm back home, you can find me at my local Parmar store. We have that thundering herd pride at your local Parmar stores. We are over 200 stores strong and growing. Download the Parmar app for even more savings and sign up for the Parmar Rewards Card. Whether it's food, gas, or groceries, we have you covered. We are Marshall and we are Parmar Stores. If there's not a Parmar store near you now, there will be soon. Here at the Cracker Barrel, homestyle food and great value go hand in hand with favorites like slow simmered chicken and dumplings starting at $7.99 or perfectly golden fluffy buttermilk pancakes with your own bottle of warm syrup. 
Come fill up on favorites without emptying your wallet. Cracker Barrel. Take care now. Back at Mary Lou Retton Park with the score tied at one. Polar Bears make a change to their lineup. Matt Masters originally in the sixth spot. Now they switch it to Tyler Veltry, who recorded his first hit of the season. Last time out against Lewis County. He's got a hit and an RBI in seven plate appearances this season. Bottom of the sixth inning. Now batting number 31, Tyler Veltry. Masters struck out and popped out in this game. They change it and put Tyler Veltry to the plate. And that one was in the dirt for ball one. Pitch from Music. That one, Veltri wanted to go, didn't, and it's strike one. Count is one and one. No one out, no one on. The pitch from Music is way outside for ball two. Music sitting at 99 pitches on the day. This will be number 100 in the bottom of the sixth inning. Polar Bear is in a good spot here. If they're not able to make anything happen this inning, they'll have their top of the lineup for the seventh, as this is sixth spot in the lineup. And Veltri sees a 3-1 count. Music deals, and that one is inside. And Tyler Veltri will take his base, and he's on with the leadoff here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Number four, Ethan Miller. Ethan Miller will come up to the plate for the Polar Bears. Tyler Veltri is the runner on first. They try to pick him off. Unsuccessful. Music has thrown a lot of pickoff attempts in this game. Hasn't had one success yet. Here's the pitch to Miller up high for ball one. The only run came when Cannon Dinger came in for Ethan Miller to run the bases after Miller was walked in the fourth. Dinger came around to score. Nobody out. One on. The pitch from Music. A swing and a miss by Miller. Here goes Veltri to second. He slides and he's safe. Tyler Veltri with the stolen base. And a close call for the umpire. But he said Veltri got there safely. Miller swung on that one. That'll be strike one, but add a stolen base for Tyler Veltri and a big one. Season scoring position with nobody out. And Ethan Miller, who's batting over 400 on the season, is who you want to try to send him home. The 1-1, one -one, and this one is into left center field. A diving catch by Grafius. He can't hang on. Here comes Veltri to the plate. Ethan Miller sends him home, and the Bears lead 2-1. How about that? Grafius tries to dive for it. He can't hang on. Veltri waited, looked, and comes home. Ethan Miller with the RBI. Polar Bears on top in the sixth. And we got a pinch runner for the Polar Bears. Guess who? Cannon Dinger again. Now back. So Dinger at second as a pinch runner. Nobody out. Bears lead 2-1. East shifts their defense. Big hole for Gorby between third and shortstop. He swings and misses for strike one. That's how big of a threat Cannon Dinger is. And here comes a mound meet with 105 pitches in this game for Owen Music. Talking to Owen Music. We'll see if they replace him or let him stay on the mound. He doesn't have his glove on. And a tough spot right here if you're East Fairmont. 
Music has played so good in this game. He just allowed his second run. With Cannon Dinger on second. Nobody out. A lot of possibilities here for the Polar Bears. And they appear to leave Music on the mound with 105 on the day. He's got an 0-1 count. It's Braden Gorby at the plate. Dinger at second with no one out. And no, he, Music turned around to throw it, tried to pick him off, and no one is over there for the Bees. Dinger drawing a lot of attention. Now McKnight comes over. He goes back to his spot. That one's inside for ball one to Gorby. One one, way outside, and a good play by the catcher Lynn to not let that get away because if that gets the wall, it's an automatic base for Dinger. Count is two and one for Gorby. Dinger with a huge lead, a swing and a miss by Gorby. Strike two. Gorby walked and struck out in this game. Two two, swung on and grounded. Takes a weird hop. The throw to first is in time for the out, and Dinger is at third. So, Polar Bears will take that one. See, you see the weird hop it took once it got to the mound. Gorby is out at first, but Dinger advances a base. Dylan Hours up to the plate. That one inside for strike one to Hours. Only one out in this inning, and Dinger's on third. Pitch from Music is swung, and that's a hit by Hours. Cannon Dinger scores. Hours sent him home. 3 1, Fairmont Senior. An RBI single from Dylan Hours. Gives the Polar Bears a two-run lead as Peschel will come to the plate. Now batting number three, Cam Peschel. And the Bees are meeting at the mound. 111 pitches on the day for Owen Music, and it's gone downhill in the sixth inning. Gives up two runs. Bees now trail by two, nearing the end of this game. What a job by Dylan Hours. Puts it in the gap. Gives the Bears a 3-1 lead in the bottom of the sixth. And Dinger has scored his second run of the game. So every time they've put him in, he's come around and delivered. Still only one out for the Polar Bears, and we've got a new pitcher. Trying to see the number for the Bees, and it is Tristan Boone, who was DHing in this game, now comes to the mound. So Owen Music is done after 111 pitches. Trying to see any more changes in the field for the Bees. And it looks like Music will go to second. They're standing in a bunch on second base, so it's hard to tell from here. Cam Peschel on the season. Batting 500. Four hits, six runs, scored two RBIs, but he's grounded out and flied out today. And he reached base on an error 
in the fourth inning. That sent Cannon Dinger home for the first run of the game. Bears are at the top of the lineup with one on and one out in the bottom of the sixth inning. So Brody Bledsoe has gone to second base and Music has gone to shortstop. Four base stays at third, and Radish will stay at first. One on, one out. New pitcher is Boone, and he tries to pick off ours immediately. No success. Bears lead 3-1. Peschel at the plate. Boone looks over to check ours. And he throws back to first again. Hours safe again. Boone is yet to throw a pitch. Checks Hours again at first. Hours with a big lead. Now Boone pitches, and Peschel gets a hold of it. Into right field. Back is Whiteman, and Whiteman makes the catch. For the second out of the inning, Nate Whiteman in right field able to hang on, and it's two away now. Up to the plate is Sammy Vianney for the Bears with two outs and one base runner. The bottom of the sixth inning, Bears by two. Two outs, one on. Boone tries to pick off Hours again. The ball gets away from Radish, but not far enough for Hours to advance a base. And Hours got hit right there on the pickoff, and he is down at first. Catching his breath, gets back up. Boone steps back on the mound for the Bees. Batter is Vianney. He tries to pick off hours again. And then they're not really coming close. Hours is not really getting a very big lead. Boone has only thrown one pitch. He's thrown four to first. One on, two out. Hours takes off, and he is going to make it to second with a stolen base for Dylan Hours. The one time he doesn't try the pickoff attempt, Hours gets a steal. This ball one to Vianney. Hours at second now in scoring position. If Vianney can put this in play, here's the pitch, and he fouls it back. Count one and one. Tries to pick off hours in that hit, hours again. So Hours kind of protected that ball from getting in the outfield. It was not a good throw to Bledsoe at second. Here's the pitch from Boone down the middle for strike two. Pitch. Vianney grounds it. Bledsoe has to play it. Fields it, throw to Radish in time. 
And that'll end the sixth inning, but not before the Polar Bears able to score two. They lead three to one as we head to the top of the seventh inning here on Video Productions. Sandwiches, better with Pepsi. An injury at any age can be a game changer. But with walk-in clinics Monday through Saturday, the Marshall Sports Medicine Institute is ready to get you off the bench and back in the game. Marshall Sports Medicine Institute takes care of the herd. Let us take care of you. I'm Keith Powell, and going on right now is my Keith Says Yes Fest. I'm saying yes to lowering your payments, yes to your trade-in, regardless of condition, miles, even if you're still making payments. My Keith Says Yes credit approval process helps me say yes, you're approved. So if you want new Chevys, yes. New Fords, yes. Lifetime warranty, yes. Come see me, Keith Powell, at Yes Chevy and Hurricane, and Yes Ford in Huntington. Welcome back to Mary Lou Retton Park, where Vianney will return to the mound. He has 88 pitches. Like to try to make it the last inning of the game. The Bears hold a 3-1 lead. Due up for the Bees, they're 6-7 and 8 spot. Mayfield, Poor Bay, and Lynn. Sammy Vianney has nine strikeouts on the day. That makes 28 on the year. Matt Masters will... Stay in the lineup for the Polar Bears at third. Veltri came in to bat for him in the previous inning. Now batting, number 12, Tanner Mayfield. Tanner Mayfield up to the plate for the Bees. He struck out and popped out in this game. The pitch from Vianney, a swing and a miss by Mayfield for strike one. Count is 0-1, nobody on, nobody out. Bees need to put... At least two runs on the board to stay alive, and Mayfield starts off with it, and Canfield has to let it bounce, and Mayfield's on with a base hit. And that is the perfect way to start this inning if you're East Fairmont. One on, nobody out, down two. You have to score two or more runs to keep this game alive. Poor Bay will come up to the plate. He has been hit by a pitch twice in this game in the second and fifth innings, and he has scored the B's only run of the game. And now they're pinch running at first. Mayfield comes off. And that will be Brady Hudson to pinch run for the B's at first. Now batting number 13, Remington Corbay. See if Corbay can have an at bat without getting pummeled. Vianney tries to pick off attempt for Hudson at first, and it's late. Vianney has 90 pitches on the day, trying to throw his second complete game of the season. That one in the strike zone for strike one. Nobody out, one base runner for the Bees. Vianney deals that one low for ball one. Hudson is ready to steal second. He's been taken off quickly when Vianney throws it. Count is 1-1. One, one. A swing and a miss by Poor Bay, and he's down in the count 1-2. Bears lead 3-1, to one, trying to close the game out. Here's a pickoff attempt. Almost gets by Jones, but he's able to hang on. Hudson... Slides back safely at first. Poor Bay stands in. The one two is low for ball two. The two two from Vianney. And for the third time today, Vianney nails poor bay and the bees have the tying run on first and the leading run comes to the plate it's case lynn three times poor bay has been hit by a pitch in this game now batting number nine case lynn 
And the Bees have two on and nobody out with Case Lynn, the catcher, has a chance to keep the game alive. He bunts this one back and foul into the press box. Polar Bears clinging to a 3-1 lead, but right now the Bees in a pretty good spot for being down two in the seventh inning. Two on, nobody out. Here's the throw, pickoff attempt. No. They caught Hudson off guard. Whitehair almost got the tag down, and that would have been huge. But he's able to stay on safely with no outs. Lynn shows bunt, and he gets it down. It's a good one. No play for Masters. He tries to throw it anyway. And the Bees have the bases loaded with nobody out. A perfect bunt by Case Lynn. And it's the second base hit of the inning for the Bees. They had just one prior to this inning, and they have two in the seventh. And pitcher Tristan Boone will come up to bat and look at it. If you're East Fairmont, this is the ninth spot. Nobody out after Boone is one and two, Music and Whiteman. And now the ump coming out to have a talk with Sammy Vianney. Not sure. Okay, it's Ethan Miller is being worked on by Polar Bear. Outstanding athletic trainer, Taryn White. So Miller is taking the pads off. We're going to step away for a second. Bees are ready to try and tie this game up. They have the bases loaded with nobody out in the top of the seventh. We'll take a quick break here on Video Productions. Oh, looks like we'll stay here. Miller gets up. We won't take a break. So I thought Miller was going to come out. He does not. He stays in. He's ready. We're ready. Tristan Boone, who is grounded out and popped out in this game, trying to do something for the Bees, and that one is up high for ball one. And now you're in a situation where if you're Vianney, you almost can't walk him. It won't tie the game with a walk, but the bases will still be loaded with no outs. And Boone grounds it to Masters, bobbles it. He doesn't know where to throw it. He gets it to Jones in time, but the Bees have a run come in. Masters wanted to throw it to the plate. But Hudson had the step. He got a good jump. Masters couldn't throw it there. Couldn't tag Poor Bay. But he does get the out. And the Bees are now down just one with two runners in scoring position. Only one out. The pitch from Vianney to Music called strike one. It's Corbe on third. And strike two for Vianney. The runner on second is River McClan. He's pinch running for Lynn. That one outside. Count is one and two. The pitch from Vianney is fouled back by Music. Music has a base hit in this game. He's struck out and grounded out. Polar Bears by one in the top of the seventh. A one-two count, two on. Vianney deals a swing and a miss. 
Music strikes out and a big strikeout there. The 10th of the game for Vianney. And how about this storyline? Nate Whiteman comes to the plate, the former polar bear. Who has grounded out twice. He's walked once. Two runners on. Two outs. The pitch from Vianney and Whiteman. This one's in the air. Hours over for the win. He has it. Fairmont Sr. wins it. A thrilling game with a thrilling finish. East Fairmont makes it interesting. And Sammy Vianney, uh, the second complete game of the year. He pitches 104 pitches in this game. The Bears hang on to win by one. And they are celebrating in front of their dugout. We'll have the post-game wrap-up coming up next when we return here on Video Productions. I'm Keith Powell, and going on right now is my Keith Says Yes Fest. I'm saying yes to lowering your payments, yes to your trade-in, regardless of condition, miles, even if you're still making payments. My Keith Says Yes credit approval process helps me say yes, you're approved. So if you want new Chevys, yes! New Fords, yes. Lifetime warranty, yes. Come see me, Keith Powell at Yes Chevy and Hurricane and Yes Ford in Huntington. An injury at any age can be a game changer. But with walk-in clinics Monday through Saturday, the Marshall Sports Medicine Institute is ready to get you off the bench and back in the game. Marshall Sports Medicine Institute takes care of the herd. Let us take care of you. Hi, this is Meredith Mayer from Fairmont, West Virginia, and when I'm back home, you can find me at my local Parmar store. We have that thundering herd pride at your local Parmar stores. We are over 200 stores strong and growing. Download the Parmar app for even more savings and sign up for the Parmar rewards card. Whether it's food, gas, or groceries, we have you covered. We are Marshall and we are Parmar stores. If there's not a Parmar store near you now, there will be soon. Sandwiches, better with Pepsi. <sighs> Since 1965, the team at City Construction has been an industry leader in all facets of construction, shaping the West Virginia landscape with some of the most recognizable commercial projects throughout the state. As one of the largest general contractors in North Central West Virginia, our outstanding record of quality workmanship and personal service is here for your next project. Call our team of experts today. Give us the opportunity to design build your next project. City Construction Company, West Virginia proud since 1965. Welcome back to Mary Lou Retton Park where the Polar Bears have just defeated the East Fairmont Bees in a thriller. 3-2 to two, the final score. We'll recap the scoring for you. It took a while for the first round to be on the board. It was Cannon Dinger who came in and pinch ran for Ethan Miller in the fourth inning. Came around off an error by first baseman Danny Radish. Dinger came in to score. That gave the Bears a 1-0 lead. Then in the fifth inning, Remington Porve was hit by pitch and put on base. And it was Owen Music with an RBI single to send Porve home to tie the game 1-1. Then in the sixth inning, the Polar Bears... Have Tyler Veltry come in. He scores on an RBI double by Ethan Miller. And Ethan Miller has been a double machine this year. Always hitting doubles in the biggest times. He sent Veltry home to give the Bears a 2-1 lead. And then Dylan Hours sent Cannon Dinger, who pinch ran for Miller again. Hours sent Dinger home on an RBI single in the sixth inning. That gave the Bears a 3-1 lead. East Fairmont was down to their last chance in the top of the seventh. Mayfield was on with a hit. Poor Bay was hit by pitch for the third time today. And then Lynn had a base hit in that one. And that had uh, Hudson come around. Hudson pinch ran for Mayfield. Hudson came to the plate, made it 3-2. to two. Then with runners on second and third, Nate. Whiteman 
came to the plate for the Bees. And Whiteman had a shot. He had a good hit in the left field, stayed in the air a little longer than he would like, and Hours was able to get under it and make the catch. The Polar Bears win. They advance to 3-1 and one on the season. Take a look at the upcoming schedule for the Polar Bears. They were supposed to play at Elkins tomorrow night at 6 p.m. That game got postponed. Not sure till when, but we'll be back in ha we'll be back in action here on the 28th. That will be Thursday at 5:30. That game will be live streamed here on Video Productions and the Polar Bears Sports YouTube channel. 5:30 game against the Buccaneers of Buchanan and Upshur. That'll be Five straight home games to open up the season for the Polar Bears. Upcoming schedule for the East Fairmont Bees. After the loss here, they make their record 2-2, two and two, and they won't be back in action until April 2nd at Elkins at 6 p.m. They'll be back home on April 4th against the Indians of Bridgeport and then at South Harrison on the 6th. So a busy Spring break for the Bees, but they don't play another game until next week. From Mary Lou Retton Park, the Polar Bears win a classic over the Bees. The final score, Fairmont Senior 3, East Fairmont 2. You've been watching live streaming coverage of Fairmont Senior Polar Bear Baseball here on Video Productions. <laughs>